Okay, here's the premise of this video. You've been hired by a client to film an interview in another state, and at the airport, you lost all of your luggage. All you have is two cell phones. Here's my question. Is it possible with two cell phones, and that's it, to quickly run to Walmart and spend less than $300 and have everything you need to film an interview for a client and they have no idea that you lost all of your luggage, including your professional cameras and all of your gear. I want to prove to you in this video that gear doesn't matter very much. You don't need very much money to get a good look. What you need is your brain and experience and your knowledge on how to make a beautiful image. This is a stretch of an idea here. I know that Thomas is super pumped about it, so I've decided to come along and see if we can make this happen. I absolutely love the idea of being able to make the best out of something that is absolutely minimal. This one here though, we're taking it to a whole new level. $300 at Walmart is gonna be a tough one. Okay, our first priority is the key light because without that, it's not gonna look good. Down here, this is a halogen light. Stay away from these. This was the first light I ever bought years and years ago, but it's super warm, it's hot, the color is orange. This right here is definitely what we're gonna buy. 5,000 lumen sounds bright. There's a cord right next to it. This is a dream come true. Same brand, this uh, tripod stand. This is gonna be perfect. So this is what our key light's gonna go on to. We've got this little guy, a 1,000 lumen little light. So we know the color will match because it's the same brand and everything. So then we can buy another stand. With these two lights and these two stands, we have the building blocks for it, for everything we need. All right, so we've got the lights, we've got our tripod stand. So far, we're at $13 for the backlight, $25 for our main key light here, and then $40 for two of these stands. That puts us at about $78 so far. So I like where we're headed. Do we know what we're gonna use these zip ties for? No, but we feel like they're definitely gonna come in handy. Two 15 footers. All right, we've got some duct tape. Um, wish we had some ProGaff, but Walmart doesn't sell that. We know that this is gonna come in handy somewhere, so it's going in the cart. Okay, check this out. I really like this. This is $11, and we'll be able to attach this to a stand. We'll zip tie a cell phone onto this, and that'll be the person's microphone. So I kind of just realized we need to buy another tripod stand for the boom mic. Oh good, one more left. Oh, oh, look, 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 look. A shower curtain liner. This is exactly what we need. This is pretty big. It's 70 inches by 71 inches. Do you know why we're buying this shower curtain? So that we can diffuse our work light because otherwise it'll be way too strong of a light source. Now that we have the shower curtain though, we have to figure out some way to put it up and hold it up. What we're thinking about is like a clothes hanger, like something that like will suspend. Oh, oh, look, right, 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 right here. Look at this. Yes. Oh, that's expensive. Th this is what I'm thinking right here. 64 bucks, but this will get us a super soft key light. See this? You, you can put clothes on it, but it gets big enough where we could suspend our shower curtain on this and get a super soft key light. I think we're gonna have to go for this. This is our most expensive one thing, but I think this is the best way to do it. Uh, oh, shoot. We need some way to support our cell phone, the camera. Let's go look in the electronic section for like a tripod or something. Oh, Walmart, the most wonderful place in the world. The, the great medium, the great gathering place for all of us. Okay, this is the one I wanna get right here. This is perfect. Okay, check this out. It's 20 bucks, but a tripod literally for a cell phone. I think this is great. It goes up to 52 inches, perfect height for some sort of interview or a simple shot, and it'll look somewhat professional. I think this is our final purchase today. Now we're just going to check out and see if we hit our budget. $265 bucks, well below our $300 budget limit. Now, let's see if we can actually get away with this. In fact, it has to look so good that the average person wouldn't realize that we shot this on an iPhone and we forgot all of our professional gear. All right, Lynn, here's the boom pole we bought at Walmart. What do you think? So the first step is to choose our angle. Okay, Lynn, look at this side of the camera. I'm gonna roll this. Okay, so. Let's find our angle. What are we looking at? At a fundamental level, in terms of 
where the key light is, where she's looking. Face your body that direction too. I like it. I think it should be noted we're shooting this in cinematic mode, <laughs> which is a cool option, but most cell phones have that now, so we don't feel like that is too out of the realm for most, so. Exactly, and we're not using any special apps of any kind. This is just the iPhone. Yeah. From here, we know that our key light should be right about here. The next thing we're gonna do is set up our key light. For the next 10 minutes, we struggled. We even read the directions, but we couldn't figure out how to put the light on the stand. The hardware included was the wrong size and nothing was working out. But then we decided to zip tie the light to the stand and move on. Here we go. Lovely, Lynn, you look amazing. Lynn is looking way too harsh right now. So next we're going to soften this light with our shower curtain and our clothes uh, rack thing. The clothes rack came together very easily. Next, we attached the shower curtain using our zip ties. And voila, diffusion. Okay, we're bringing Lynn's stool down a little bit because this key light isn't quite high enough. So we're gonna lower our camera, make sure that looks good. That'll be better for her. And always remember the camera should be about eye level here. Hey, I think this is looking pretty good. What do you think? Yeah, this is, looks way better than I thought it was gonna look so far. Um, ben, let's bring in this diffusion as close as we possibly can to Lynn. So Ben bringing in a little bit more. We're trying to get the key light as close to Lynn as possible. Okay, pull out that backside a little bit. There you go, we're out. There. Yes, Thanks. now remember, when we're dealing with lights like this, the closer you can get to the subject, the softer it'll be. So what Ben is gonna do now is he's going to use this duct tape. Check this out with me, come here, come here. Here's my problem. This light here is hitting this, see this? See these ugly shadows? It's making our background too bright. So Ben is going to get some duct tape and we're gonna flag off that light as much as we can. We'll just uh, rip a piece of cardboard up from this box. Let's see if this does it here. Yeah, that took care of the problem. Okay. I'm gonna have to bring cardboard on set with me more often. This That worked out way too good. All right, this is looking better here. Ooh. I'm going to crop in, go in a little bit, crop out a little bit of a window. Let me see. What I'm liking about this right now is Lynn is really popping from the background more, and she's the center of attention. So just with standard interview lighting here, let's pull in our backlight now and see what that looks like. It's just not high enough. You really want a backlight if you're coming from a pretty high angle, so it looks like a light in the room or something hitting them, but we'll have to figure this out. Because the stand wasn't high enough, we had to use our brains again, and we decided that a cardboard box would do the trick. This is hilarious. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, I'm gonna plug this in, see what it looks like. Okay, so just like I thought right off the bat, I think this is a little bit too harsh. So yeah, let's just cut a piece of this shower curtain off and diffuse the heck out of this thing and it'll look better. On. I think, uh, yeah, it's really great. It's looking really good. Look a little hot still, or we no, can... no, I'm happy with it. Move it this way as much as you can. Are we in the shot if we move it? Ready? Yep, keep going. Okay, pull it out now. And stop. Okay, so we've moved it as close as we possibly can into the shot, so that way it's as far behind her as possible without booming it over behind her. So here's our crazy idea. We're gonna use a second iPhone as a boom mic in this setup. And I think it should sound pretty good. And so we're gonna attach it to this. We're using our Walmart skills here to capture audio with a cell phone. Does that not sound very professional to you? The closer the mic, the better the sound. So um, as long as the, the iPhone doesn't fall on Lynn's head mid shot, um, it should be semi professional. So I think this is gonna count as professional as long as they don't see what's actually happening. And that's the beauty of audio. It's uh, getting the microphone as close as possible. In this case, the iPhone. If you get that as close to the source, we're gonna get the cleanest audio possible. Okay, Ben, what are you doing here? Uh, this right here is our uh, boom lifter. We then proceeded to very professionally and carefully attach the boom pole to the stand with duct tape. I don't trust these guys. It might hit me in the head. A friend of mine once went to film a wedding elopement out in the middle of nowhere. He got there, had none of his audio recorders. The workaround he had, the groom put an iPhone in his pocket 
and I heard the film afterwards, you would never know. There's our shot, Ben. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty impressed with it. As I celebrated, Ben reminded me that we had broken one of the most important rules of lighting. We had forgotten to turn the house lights off. Okay, for the interest of the video, I think we have to turn off the rest oh, of the lights. Oh, shoot! Shoot! I broke my most important rule! We have to turn off the house lights. Shoot. This probably doesn't look as good. Too contrasty now. Once again, the cardboard from Walmart proved useful. Ben held a white box close to Lynn's face. You can see the difference it made here. This is without the box. This is with it. Before we play the final finished interview, I want to take a moment for us to remember pixel peeping and obsessing about gear really doesn't matter. What matters is the final product the emotion the audience feels when they look at the screen. I live in Arizona and I think it's beautiful. The desert can be much more beautiful than people realize. Driving an hour or so, you can be in the, in the pines. If you're thinking about visiting Arizona, I definitely recommend it. So I'm curious what you guys think. I mean, this setup was super, kind of homemade and I mean, I thought the lighting looked pretty good. Uh, what do you think, Ben? Uh, I think it pushes the boundaries of how little you can get your budget, but as you know, whatever gear I have, I try to make the absolute most of it. And I know how it feels to get that gear acquisition syndrome where you feel like you need to buy everything and you have so many lights. This should give some inspiration to people that shows them that they don't need the most amazing things. They just need to learn how they work, how they can make the best of whatever it is they have. If you enjoyed this video and you want to subscribe to this channel, do not subscribe to this channel. But there is this one new YouTuber, his name's Ryan Mickey. And right now, the subscribers from this channel are all going to his channel and subscribing so we can make like a new YouTuber because he only has like 500 subscribers or something as of today. So go to his channel and let's blow him up. He won't even know what happened to him. <laughs>